The sisters were nourished with your body and blood. Grant them a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Let us all pray together. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you wept at the death of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. We ask this in faith. Your response, Lord, Lord hear our hear prayer. prayer. You raised the dead to life. Give our sisters eternal life. We ask this in faith. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sisters to the joys of heaven. We ask this in faith. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. With the oil of salvation, give them fellowship with all your saints. We ask this in faith. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our sisters. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We ask this in faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us all together recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and give us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Loving and merciful God, we ask you to bless the graves of these sisters called by you. You loved them greatly in this life. Now that they are freed from all their cares, give them happiness and peace forever. The old order has passed away. Welcome them now into paradise where there will be no more sorrow, no more weeping or pain but only peace and joy with and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen.
my dear fathers and sisters and friends a very good evening to all of you i am here in the name of his lordship bishop jayra polimera to celebrate this eucharist for the departed souls of our beloved sisters who are buried here and also elsewhere in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Kindly be seated for the introduction. A warm good evening to all. Dear Reverend Father Bala Pachimala, the Vicar General of Eluru Diocese, dear fathers, sisters, parents of sister sandoshi sisters of the queen of peace region and dear friends joining us online from different parts of the world to participate in this memorial mass for our beloved sisters sister josephine di raimu sister maria allegro sister amala budali and sister bala sandoshi polishetti i extend to you a warm and cordial welcome COVID-19 has devoured lakhs of lives around the world and still continue to do so. April and May 2021 will ever remain as most painful and unforgettable in the history of the Queen of Peace region when this house was affected by COVID and our beloved sisters, Sister Maria on April 29th and Sister Amala on May 7th became the victims of this deadly virus. Later on, October 6th, Sister Sandoshi passed away with a rare cancer and on March 13th, 2022, Sister Josephine, who was in Rome also, said goodbye to us. Here we are remembering them with grateful hearts, wish to offer this sublime act of thanksgiving to the Lord for their grace-filled lives. As we join in this Eucharistic celebration, I welcome Reverend Father Bala Pachimala and all the fathers, sisters and friends to this memorial mass. Let us pray that our sisters whom the Lord has called to himself may finally receive eternal reward prepared for them for their fruitful and generous service in the vineyard of the Lord. May their souls rest in peace. Amen. To Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the souls of your servants who, for love of Christ, walk the way of perfect charity, may rejoice in the coming of your glory, and together with our sisters, may delight in the everlasting happiness of your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the eyes of the foolish, they seemed to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster. And their going promised to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, 
their hope is full of immortality having been disciplined a little they will receive great good because god tested them and found them worthy of himself like gold in the furnace he tried them and like a sacrificial burnt offering he accepted them in the time of their visitation they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble they will govern nations and rule over peoples and the lord will reign over them forever those who trust in him will understand truth and the faithful will abide with him in love because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones and he will watch us over his elect the word of the lord thanks be to god let drop in paul to the romans chapter 14 verses 7 to 12 we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves if we live we live to the lord and if we die we die to the lord so then whether we live or whether we die we are the lords for to this end christ died and lived again so that he might be lord of both the dead and the living why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister or you why do you despise your brother or sister for we will all stand before the judgment seat of god for it is written as i live says the lord every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to god so then each of us will be accountable to god the word of the lord thanks be to god be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint john glory to you o lord Gospel according to Saint John, chapter eleven, verses thirty-eight to forty-five. Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, "Take away the stone." Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, "Lord, already there is." There is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, "Did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God?" So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked up and said, "Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you would always hear me, but." I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me when he had said this he cried with a loud voice Lazarus come out then the dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth and Jesus said to them unbind him 
and letting go. Many Jew, many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters, brothers, today as we offer this Mass for the repose of the souls of Sister Maria, Sister Josephine, Sister Ramala and Sister Bala Santoshi, we join ourselves with the sentiments of the Sisters of Maestre Pia Filippini tonight and offer our tributes to the departed souls and entrust them to the Lord entreating the Lord for his mercy on these souls. Today's gospel of the raising of Lazarus is very familiar to us. In the second reading, we have seen St. Paul speaking to Romans about life and death. Anybody's life or death apart from Jesus is meaningless. That's what St. Paul wanted to say. Only in the context of Jesus' death and resurrection, our lives and our death become meaningful. And we live for Jesus and we die for Jesus because he rose from the dead. Apart from that, our living and our death will have no meaning. And in today's gospel, all familiar one to all of us, speaks about this. St. John wants to prove a point. The purpose of raising Lazarus was not to make Lazarus to live again and enjoy life, but there is a purpose according to St. John. The purpose was to make people understand that Jesus was sent by God, Son of God, or God Himself. And how does he prove this point? As we all know, the greatest miracles that Jesus worked in his lifetime were two. The curing of the man born blind and raising of Lazarus. And the greatest and the last was raising of Lazarus and it is strategically put at the end of the public ministry of Jesus in the 11th chapter of St. John. And 12, we have the entering into Jerusalem and from 13 onwards, we begin the passion, the washing of the feet, the discourse, and the passion, death and resurrection until 21st chapter. So practically, the 11th chapter is the last one in the public life of Jesus and 45 verses are devoted to the raising of Lazarus. And this entire episode is divided into four parts by John himself, as I see, subject to correction by professors here of Johnine theology. I am not going for theology, but as a, an ordinary parish priest or a pastoral man, I am making a reflection on the episode of the raising of Lazarus. In the first part, we have people going from Bethany to Jesus, informing him about the sudden illness of Lazarus. Some say by the time these people left Bethany with this news and they reached Jesus, Lazarus might have been dead. But Jesus says he was asleep Jesus got the news in time about the, the illness or death of uh, Lazarus and in the first part what surprises us is uh, in spite of his love for Lazarus and that family, Jesus does not hurry up to go to Bethany. He delays. He stays back in the same village where he was for another two days. John makes a special mention about this to make us understand or wonder why Jesus was delaying until Jesus works the miracle of raising Lazarus we will not understand 
that this delay was a strategic delay by Jesus, that he wanted to delay. In other words, it may surprise us or we may not like it, but Jesus wanted Lazarus to die. He wanted to go to Bethany only after the death of Lazarus. That's the first part. Now the second part, after the death of Lazarus, as we know afterwards when Martha says that he was buried for four days, that Jesus arrives in Bethany after the death of, four days after the death of Lazarus and the first, second part is about his encounter with Martha. And the question that Martha puts forward to Jesus was, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Actually, it was a question in frustration. She meant, why did you come now? You should have come four days ago before my brother died. If you were to be here before my brother died, or even soon after the death, you would have done something or you would have cured my brother or raised my brother. But now it is too late. Four days since his death, four days he is buried and his body might be decaying. There is no use. Why did you come late? If you were to be here, my brother would not have died. In the third part, we have Jesus encountering Mary and the same question Mary asked him, why did you come late? If you were here, my brother would not have died. It's a statement in frustration, in a way asking Jesus explanation, why were you late? In all probability, Martha and Mary heard the episodes where Jesus raised the daughter of Jairus and also the son of the widow of Naim. Those incidents were telling us that Jesus was able to raise people who were dead, but then not after four days. There was no incident before this that someone was raised from life four days after death or four days after burial. And Mary asked the same question. And in the same passage we have the Jews making a statement similar to this. This man who loved Lazarus so much, this man who was weeping for Lazarus, why did he come late? Did he not know that if we were to come in time, he could have made Lazarus live. He could not have allowed Lazarus to die or even after death, he would have raised Lazarus, but not now after four days. The man who cured the blind born blind, the man who worked so many miracles and raised the other two, why is he late and why did he allow Lazarus to die? And in the fourth part, Jesus, after weeping for Lazarus, goes in front of the grave of Lazarus and he stands in front of the grave. People were amazed. What is he going to do now? There is nothing left for Jesus to do. Maybe he was a great prophet. Maybe he had a record of raising other two people during his public ministry. But now he has no chance. He arrived late. And in the first part, as we are already told, Jesus purposely arrived late. And now he stands before the grave and he calls out Lazarus in a loud voice, Lazar, come out. I believe that this calling of Jesus standing in front of the grave of Lazar reminded the onlookers, the Jews, the passage from the book of prophet Ezekiel. 37th chapter in the book of Ezekiel, 
brings to us a great experience of prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel was taken by God to a valley filled with dry bones. Bones mixed up, hundreds of bones. Nobody can distinguish one skeleton from the other. All got mixed up and they were dried up maybe for many, many years. And God tells Ezekiel, prophesy so that these bones will live. And the prophet was confused. How can I? If you put some skeletons side by side, maybe I can try. But now there is no use. And these bones are dried up. Will they ever come back to life if I prophesy? And God says, prophesy. I will make sure that these bones will come to life. Relying on God's word, Prophet Ezekiel prophesies. And he also makes a prophecy of breath. And all the dry bones in that valley rise up and they get back life. And the purpose of this raising the dry bones to life was to tell a lesson to Prophet Ezekiel. Because the people of Israel were cursing God for the suffering they were going through. Why does God allow us to go through this suffering? Whenever we have instances of suffering in our life, we also have the same question in our minds. Why does God allow this? Why does God allow this to me? Why not others? Why me? Why me? And the people of Israel were asking God the same question. Why us? Why did you do this to us? And prophet told them, God does not leave your hand. He will be with you. He will come to your aid. He will listen to you. And the people asked the prophet, when does God listen to us? Does that happen during our lifetime or after our death? What can God do after we die? Can't he listen to us when we are alive and crying to him? And to answer this, God takes Ezekiel to this valley of dry bones. Making the dry bones come to life and tells the prophet, Go and tell the people of Israel or whoever, whoever is in frustration, whoever is in difficulty, whoever is in suffering and has the same question, why me, why us? Why did this happen to our sisters? Why did this happen to these people? Why did they die? Why should they die? And God tells Prophet Ezekiel, I have made these dry bones come back to life in order to teach you and teach the people of Israel a lesson. That it is not impossible for me to save you from this present difficulty, whatever it may be. I can. I will. I will be with you. I will lead you from your difficulty to prosperity. From your difficulty to freedom. I am God of freedom. But then there is another question. Why and when? When will God do this? Will he do this after our death? And God says yes. Even after your death. I can open your graves. I will pull you out with life. And I will lead you from this present state to the state of freedom. Believe me, I have this power. And today when Jesus is standing in front of the grave of Lazarus and calling out, Lazarus, come out. I think the people who were on looking were reminded of this passage from the book of Ezekiel. As God said, I will stand before your graves. I will call you out by your names. I will raise you to life. And I will lead you to the place where you want it. Doesn't matter. Maybe years later. 
days later, doesn't matter if it is four days after death or 40 days after death or 40 years after death, I have the power over death. And this God has power over death and that is what Jesus wanted to communicate to people that he was standing there in front of the grave of Lazarus calling out Lazar by his name and raising him to life. It's not just to give Lazar another chance to live, but to make people understand that he was son of God. He was God himself. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 13 speaks of this, that when I stand in front of your grave and call you out and you come to life, you will know that I am your God you will know that I am your God. When will you know that I am your God? When I stand in front of your grave, when I call you out by your name, and I will raise you to life, you will understand that I am your God. And today, when Jesus is raising Lazarus, the people understood that this man who stood in front of the grave of Lazarus, called out Lazarus by name, and raised him to life is none other than God. And this is what Jesus wanted to communicate and John also wanted to communicate. The purpose of the raising of Lazarus is nothing but to tell us that Jesus is God. That Jesus has power over life and death. That he is not a person who dies and just get ignored by history. But he does not just remain dead, he also rises. Not only raising of Lazarus but Jesus himself after death rises, making sure that death is destroyed forever. And today, as we gather around this Eucharistic table to celebrate this memorial mass for the departed souls of Sister Maria, Sister Josephine, Sister Bala Santoshi and Sister Ramala, we once again affirm our faith in the life and resurrection of Jesus. We proclaim our faith in the risen Lord. We firmly believe that this Jesus whom we believed or in whom those departed sisters believed during their lifetime as religious of Maestra Pia Filippini, that they also will rise as Jesus is risen. Because Jesus died and rose. We have this guarantee that we also will rise one day. That Jesus has the power to raise us. Doesn't matter. Four days after death, 40 days after death, 40 years after death or 400 years after death, we all will be raised. We all will be raised. There is no time limit for God. That God is all powerful. God has power over death. By dying, he destroyed death and the death has no more power to overtake us. And with this faith, we celebrate this Eucharist for the departed souls of our beloved sisters. I recall the warmth of Sister Josephine and Sister Maria whenever I visited them. They have made great contribution to this campus, one of the pioneering sisters of this campus, they made a great contribution to this campus. The Diocese of Eluru places on record the contribution those two sisters made. And on behalf of the bishop, I convey our heartfelt condolences to the sisters of this community and the sisters of this congregation and pray to God that God will raise them up on the last day and reward them the eternal life that he has promised. As religious of Maestra P. Filippini, that they also will rise as Jesus is risen. Because Jesus died and rose, we have this guarantee that we also will rise one day. That Jesus has the power to raise us. Doesn't matter. Four days after death, 40 days after death, 40 years after death or 400 years after death, we all will be raised. 
we all will be raised there is no time limit for god that god is all powerful god has power over death by dying he destroyed death and the death has no more power to overtake us and with this faith we celebrate this eucharist for the departed souls of our beloved sisters i recall the warmth of sister josephine and sister maria whenever i visited them they have made great contribution to this campus one of the pioneering sisters of this campus they made a great contribution to this campus the diocese of eluru places on record the contribution those two sisters made and on behalf of the bishop i convey our heartfelt condolences to the sisters of this community and the sisters of this congregation and pray to god that god will raise them up on the last day and reward them the eternal life that he has promised we also pray for all the clergy and religious let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer eternal father we pray for the departed souls of st josephine diraimo st maria allegro st amala and st santoshi remember their good deeds selfless service the struggles and the sacrifices that they had endured during their lifetime on earth grant them pardon and forgiveness for all their sins merciful father have mercy on their souls perfect them in your love and number them among your saints let us pray to the lord hear us o lord we pray hear us and answer us now loving lord jesus we surrender the family members relatives and friends of our departed sisters to your unfathomable love touch all of them with your compassion and console and comfort them in their sorrows we also pray for the departed souls of their parents and the relatives who have gone already for their eternal reward we commend them to your mercy and take their souls to your holy abode let us pray to the lord hear us o lord we pray hear us and answer us now lord jesus we pray for our entire institute our mother general provincials regional superiors and their counselors superiors all the sisters and the aspiring members of our institute grant us your constant guidance and inspiration to be faithful to our charism and help us to become a beacon of your love let us pray to the lord hear us o lord we pray hear us and answer us now loving lord we pray for all those who are suffering with various kinds of sickness the poor and the needy come to their assistance and give them the grace to bear their sufferings graciously we also pray for our beloved parents brothers and sisters bless them and take care of them let us pray to the lord hear us o lord we pray hear us and answer Let's pray in silence for the repose of the souls of Bishop Matthew and also Bishop Adagatla Inaya. Heavenly Father, we raise to you our prayers and petitions. We pray for all the departed of this campus. We ask you. to grant them eternal life we make this prayer through christ our lord amen
brothers and sisters that the sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to God. Chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and bread of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with the Francis, our Pope, Jaira, our Bishop, all the bishops and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Sister Josephine, Maria, Amela, and Mother Santoshi, whom you have called 
from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like him may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be prepared to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Lord Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you set your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. away the sins of the world, happy are we who are called to this banquet of love. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter. Oh, what peace we open for.
to cherish this memory, our sisters have prepared a magazine named A Sparkling Beacon as a loving tribute to Reverend Sister Maria Allegro, MPF. Along with our regional superior and all the members of our Indian region, we are very grateful to God and to all the bishops, priests and sisters, all those who had a close contact with Sister Maria, gave their contribution and shared their deep sentiments of joy for having known her and of sadness for her sudden demise. At this juncture, I feel it is an opportune time to let you mo know more something about Sister Maria and her 35 years of dedicated life to God and loving service to all. So I request Reverend Father Bala, the Vicar General of our Elur Diocese, to release the memorial magazine of Reverend Sister Maria Allegro, MPF. Thank you, Father. Samira of Class 10. Thank you, sisters. Let us pray. As we participate in the divine mysteries, we pray, Almighty God, that they may advance our salvation and bring pardon to the souls of your servants, Sister Maria, Sister Josephine, Sister Amala, and Sister Bala Santoshi, for whom we implore your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed as most powerful things humans can do for each other. A warm good evening to all the fathers, sisters, brothers, friends, and my dear sisters, novices, candidates who are present here. I deemed it a great honor and privilege to propose the word of thanks on this memorable occasion. First of all, start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making today's occasion a resounding success. I stand here on behalf of our Queen of Peace region. Let me take this precious moment to thank the Almighty God for allowing us to congregate here today and to celebrate this memorial mass for our beloved sisters, Reverend Sister Maria Ligro, Reverend Sister Josephine Di Raimu, Reverend Sister Amala Budali, and Sister Bala Santoshi Polishiti. I thank our Bishop Jaira Polimera, though he is not present with us, still we acknowledge his fatherly concern and prayerful support. Also appointing Reverend Father Bala Pachimala, the Vigar General of Elur Diocese, who despite of his busy schedule has found time to grace this occasion. Thank you, Father Proud for proceeding over this Eucharistic celebration and sharing your inspiring message with us. 
I want a, a special gratitude to our beloved Mother General, Sister Ashen Satitsano and her counselors for their motherly concern, prayerful support and encouragement. Above all, her spiritual and financial support and always assuring us, go ahead, we are with you. I would like to thank our regional superior and her team who had organized this memorable day. It was long awaited day and our prayer to come together to this Eucharistic banquet in honor of our beloved sisters in heaven. We are always grateful to Father Johnson for his sincere support and concern for us. Words can't fulfill our gratitude to him. Dear Father Johnson, we always admire the person who you are in our midst. You are always ever ready to help us in all our undertakings with a touch of your creative and artistic ideas, even to completion of the cemetery as mastermind. Thank you, dear Father. A special thanks to Mr. Narayana, the consector, and his team for their effort and hard work to complete the cemetery work. I extend my thanks to Reverend Father Chinnu Polishetti for his brotherly concern, especially the most difficult time that you stood with us as one of the family members to console us, to strengthen us, to support us, to guide us in spite of the deadly virus COVID-19. Thank you so much, dear Father Chinu. May God continue to bless you to be a herald of God's love. I thank Mr. Sham, our tiny star. Now he shines as giant through his creative ideas, who has put a lot of efforts and time to finish all our designing works, especially the memorial of our beloved sister, Maria Ligro, a sparkling beacon and taking initiative for the AV presentation. Thank you, dear Sham. I thank all the fathers and sisters who have come from afar and all the people of goodwill for finding time to be here today to empathize with us. There are no words to express myself. May the Lord reward you for the kind justice. My heart goes out to thank all our friends and all those who are present here for accepting our invitation and making this occasion pleasant. I thank all the fathers and sisters, brothers from various communities of Mariapuram campus for your prayerful support and inspiring us in working together at all times. May God continue to bless you to be always united in his love. Special thanks to all the choir members for their melodious voice and the pleasant music played by Brother Akil from Vianney College. I would like to acknowledge Mr. Thambi and their team for their light and the sound system. Thank you so much. With grateful heart, I remember all our sisters who have come from various communities. Thank you, dear sisters, for your support and sisterly love for the region. Thanks, one and all. In loving memory of Reverend Sister Maria Liego, in Italy, she joined the Institute of the Religious Teachers Filipini in Rome on February 2nd, 1959, and received the religious habit on September 15th, 1960, one of the pioneers. She incarnated the charism of Maestre Pia Filippini literally. She loved the youth and gave herself to them, committing her time to these words. Her deep-rooted conviction of religious life was very visible. Her hospitality to the guests was remarkable. She made sure that they had a homely atmosphere. She was very good at preparing special dishes and served with much love and attention. 
April 2021, Sister Maria started suffering from fever and other symptoms of COVID and was admitted in the hospital. But the treatment could not save her. Respecting her desire, we brought her back to home. She breathed her last at 8.50 p.m. on April 29th and the angel of God carried her soul. She silently flew away to heaven for her eternal reward and departed from us. Everyone and everything stopped. A sudden stillness and emptiness all burst in tears. Sister Maria departed from us leaving behind a void which no one can fill a void of true missionary for the Catholic Church, serving the Institute for 61 years. Following the COVID protocols, her burial took place immediately. The funeral was at 2 a.m. on April 30th. Her mortal remains buried in our convent compound. of Sister Maria Allegro. Our words are limited to thank you, dear Sister Maria, for all that you were to each one of us. We thank you, we love you, and we miss you. May your soul rest in peace. Amen. of Reverend Sister Josephine. Sister Josephine de Raimo was born on March 18, 1936 in Italy. On October 2, 1950, she entered the Pontifical Institute of the Maestro P.A. Filippini. On July 4, 1954, she made her temporary oblation. That same year, her entire family migrated to Brazil. On September 1st, 1957, she made her perpetual oblation. Sister rendered her valuable service in different countries, namely... <laughs>